Welcome to Dixboro United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Mary, and we have had a very fun, exciting weekend. Well, starting yesterday morning, the youth and I, we and a few others, we packed up into vans and we went to Cass. And while we were there, the chef Matt, who works in the kitchen, he provided one last appetizer for these youth to eat. And then they have not had any food since that really tasty uh, appetizer that he makes. Um, so they are excited about bringing worship to you this morning and worshiping with you and everything that uh, goes along with also breaking their fast during communion this morning. Uh, we have just a lot of things going on, so it's wonderful. But if you could pass those friendship pads in your pew, and if you are new with us this morning, we welcome you, and welcome back to some that have uh, been away for the winter, and those who are just visiting with us uh, to see their, their family and friends in the in worship this morning. And Pastor Tanya has a quick announcement that she wants to make here. Good morning. Just a reminder that uh, this morning, approximately 15 minutes after the conclusion of the worship service, I want to invite those of you who are um, new to Dixborough Church and want to learn more about who we are and how you can become more involved in our ministry, join me in the church parlor for a very light lunch and a meet and greet time. I've heard from some of you. We've got plenty of food, so even if you don't have a reservation, I hope you'll join us. It'll be about 45 minutes just an opportunity to get to know one another and to get to know Dixborough Church. Just uh, see me after the worship service and we'll head down to the parlor together. Thank you. Yeah? What? No, 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 over here. They don't like the microphones, but I'm making them use the microphones. Let us pray. Hey God, we are here to worship you this morning. Quiet our hearts and open our ears to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Could we have someone ring our church bell?
stand and join us in our call to worship. Let the peoples praise you. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. We praise you, O God, for your mighty acts. We praise you for your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. We praise you, O God, for your loving kindness. We praise you for unending mercy. We live, we, we, your people, praise you. We, your people, praise you, O God. We lift our hands to praise you. We lift our voices to sing for joy. Let's remain standing and join in singing every time I feel the Spirit. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out his mouth came fire and smoke. All around me looks so shine, as the Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River runs right cold, chills the body, not the soul. Ain't but one train on this track, runs to heaven and right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. You may be seated. We're going to pray now. Wait, I'm going to do this first. Never mind. <laughs> you can do it. You, you do this, Joy. Happy anniversary to Tom and Beth Little. <laughs> <laughs> Thankful for 23 years today. Oh. Beth is good to me, Tom Little. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm going to read this one for him. Because it's a little hard to It's in pencil. It's, i got to be in the right light here. This is for Becky. Um, or from Becky, and she asked for prayers for herself that Wednesday was a very uh, difficult day. Where's Becky? Here's Becky, yeah. All right. Um, a very difficult day for her. She found herself very faint and dizzy, and um, she said, thank goodness for uh, good people who were nearby and helped her find out what was going on. And I'm sorry. Oh. Anything? Uh, but praise that you're doing well. Thank, we're, we're, we're glad you're doing well. And the, the last one here is on Friday night, she attended the um, Balvin, is that how? Blavin, sorry, I knew I was going to say it wrong. Scholars, and the dinner was very inspiring. That's some students that we um, sponsor at the University of Michigan. Um, so it was a great uh, dinner that they had there. And we're glad you're doing good also. Oh, I'm sure. Probably Janice was there. Who, who was all there? Raise your hand if you were at the dinner there. Thank you so much for going and representing our church um, on Friday night. Yes? So what Becky was saying is that the Blavin scholars are 
to our students who have been in foster care and have continued on in their education and don't have family to support them. So we are helping be their family as they are going to school. Uh, so it's, it's a wonderful program that we're involved in. If you want to find out more information and would like to do more about it, I would say see one of these people that had a hand up. Janice Clark is our leader for that. Thank you for leading that, Janice. We're going to sing a song first between or before we uh, pray. So if you will join us in singing the spirit of the living God. May we hear the voice of your spirit, O God, teaching us how to love you and keep your commandments. May we hear the voice of your spirit that teaches and comforts and warns and abides with us, even during difficult times. May we hear the voices of the people you have made, O God, calling to us for help, crying out for a witness to your love and your grace. May we hear the people of Macedonia or of any other distant land, and may we hear needy voices that are nearby, voices we have drowned out by the noise of our own cares. God, give us ears to hear the voice of your spirit. God, give us ears to hear the cries of people asking for help in your name. May we hear your spirit, O oh God, working and moving among us every day. May we feel the touch of your spirit. May we taste the goodness of your love. May we smell the sweetness of your fruits of the spirit. And with your, our voices as one, let us say the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
told them I'd give them moral support when they're up here standing, uh, so they're not by themselves. <laughs> um, so I have a few announcements. So first, sign up for the ladies' dessert and salad on May 12th and see Beth Little. <laughs> um, Amanda will have CDs for sale in the fellowship hall. She wants to say one quick thing. Do you want to run her? Now she's coming up. We've, we finally have the scholarships available, the applications in the office. So pick that up or see Spence also. He might have one in his hand you can grab. Right, you want to use one. Yep. Yeah, he'll pick you up. Okay, so this summer I've been accepted into a program. Um, it's called the American Institute of Musical Studies, um, and it's in Graz, Austria. And so in order to raise money, I have um, compiled a CD of eight of my favorite songs, and um, they're for sale for $15. They'll be in the office. Okay, so they'll be for sale in the office, um, and if you have any questions, you can see me after service. Um, and then next Sunday, come celebrate Mother's Day with us. Um, and then tomorrow, or yesterday, we fasted at CAS. Um, and then here are some of the pictures. Um, we helped prepare the food, and then we also served the food. Um, and if you'd like to help, on Wednesday, May 4th, you can go to CAS um, and let Mary know today if you'd like to. So one way the youth gave was by going to CAS yesterday, and other ways that we give is by tithing and supporting the church's ministries. Will the ushers please come forward? Is with the 
Loving God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to bring the peace of Christ. We are grateful that you continuously teach us through your spirit. Help our hearts to be so filled with your peace that our congregation will show forth your goodness to the world around us. Let your loving presence be known through our church's ministry. Accept these offerings as a sign of our trust in you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Children. Can we please have the children come forward? Go ahead. You want to be... You need a microphone. Will that make her own fine? So what are your guys' favorite fruits? So these fruits that you guys are naming help your, keep your body healthy, while the fruits in the Bible keep your spirit healthy. These fruits from the Bible are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Speaking of these fruits, we have a song. Okay, I'll teach you all the words. It's, it, it'll, I'll do it slow for you though, so okay. It starts by, I'll pick a fruit, I'll pick Ethan's favorite strawberry. So it's the fruit of the spirits, not a strawberry. You have to shout strawberry though. So, okay, the fruit of the spirits, not a strawberry. The fruit of the spirits, not a strawberry. If you want to be a strawberry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. The fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, all, all. And then you say them all again. So, okay. All right, now Zach's gonna play the guitar, so we'll do this. We'll go. We'll start slow. Okay, so I'll pick a fruit. What's your favorite fruit, Noel? Watermelon. watermelon. Okay, so the fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. The fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, now I need one more fruit, and we'll speed it up a little bit every time. So it'll get pretty quick. All right, Brooke, what's your favorite fruit? A strawberry. Okay. Fruit of the spirit is not a strawberry. The fruit of the spirit is not a strawberry. If you want to be a strawberry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. The fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, I need another fruit. Who wants to give me a fruit? Callan. A cherry? Okay. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. The fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, we'll do it one more time. This one's super fast. Everybody ready? Corbin, what's your favorite fruit? Watermelon. We'll do it again. Okay. Fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. The fruit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, oh. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Woo! That was a good song. Hooray! <laughs> giving us the fruits of the spirits to help our our healthy relationship with you lord we thank you so much for your love and joy and peace and all those that we just sang about it's in your son's name we pray amen, amen. thank you guys and if you will stand and join us in our next song where you guys are standing up front
you may be seated. Just as an introduction to our scripture, on, we decided we needed to do something fun. So last Sunday at youth group, I said, let's put a video together of the scripture. So we put a video together, and I'll just uh, say a couple words of, we're so excited to have Ian preaching this morning. And he, he really wanted to just sing the song that he just sang, and I said, well, we need a few other words. So we got, got him to do both here. I'm so excited. So um, if you'll watch this video, and then Ian will take over. I say be guided by the Spirit, and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the Spirit, and the Spirit is set against them selfish desires. They're opposed to each other, so you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you are being led by the Spirit, you aren't under the law. The actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious. A person's selfish desires are set against the spirit, and the spirit is set against one's selfish, selfish desires. They are opposed to each other, so you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you are being led by the spirit, you aren't under the law. The actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious, since they include sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, casting spells, hate fighting. Obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousy, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. I warn you, as I have already warned you, that those who do these kinds of things won't inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. Let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. Hello. Okay. <clears throat> so... Now we know what the fruit of the Spirit are, I hope, from the song and the video and reading it as with it. But what do they mean, really? Like, we know what loving is, caring for other people, patience, peace, like not being violent and waiting for things. But what does the Bible mean by it? Because we, that's what it means to us. That's what the dictionary says. But what does the Bible really mean? Well, this is how I choose to think about it. Because if you do God's work, you get the fruit of the Spirit. That's, how it's, that's what it says. And if you do what you want, your own selfish stuff, you get all those bad things we saw. But how, how do you just do God's work and get the fruit of the Spirit? Do you just do God's work and you feel loved, like out of nowhere? I mean, I hope so. But I think the way it's, you're supposed to give other people those fruit, you already have all of that inside of you. But you give it to other people, and then they will give it back to you. So if you do what God wants, you will receive the fruit, but from others. Because everybody already has all of those things inside of them. Love, peace, patience, joy, all the stuff. So, like, how do we do it in everyday life? How do you just, you just go around loving everybody and showing self-control? Well, pretty much, yeah. That's, <laughs> I, am, I have a little metaphor for how you should do it. It's, well, treat people the way you want to be treated is kind of the basic thing. But hugs and slaps. If someone walks up to you and they just give you a hug, 
You're not going to slap them across the face. You're going to give them a hug back. It's like when you, give, when you love somebody, they'll love you right back. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And if you go up and slap someone, well, hopefully you can so, show some self-control and not slap them back, but they might. They might. So just don't go around doing that. That's a good thing. Um, and, well, why does God want us to do this? I mean, sh- he likes it. It's good. But why does he care, really? Why should we love other people? And just why, if we praise him, why does he care what we do to everyone else? Well, because it makes us happy. I'm much happier when I'm loving other people and show, doing all the other fruits, love, joy, peace, being happy. One of them is joy, which is happiness. So it just, when you give those people the fruit, not only, do you, not only do you feel better, but you make them just feel a lot better because some people just are... Nobody likes, like, people aren't nice to them, and it happens all the time, and I have a story about that, actually. When I was in fifth grade, and this is when I was, like, super short. I mean, I know elementary, everyone's tiny, but I was really tiny, and with the last name Little, it did not help, but, you know, (laughs) there was this new kid. He just came in fifth grade, and he was, like, he wasn't mean to everyone, but people just didn't like him for some reason, so everyone was mean to him, and he just started being mean back. Because that's what you do. If someone's mean to you, you're mean right back to them. And then one day, like, someone said something rude. So I stuck up for him. I just, and he snapped at me. I stuck up for him, and he got mad at me. And I was so confused, because I had shown him love and compassion, and he, has, he was rude back to me, which, why would you do that? And I think if, if one person, you're, they're just, people are mean to them all the time, their instant reaction if anyone gives them anything, any fruit of the spirit or of the bad things, they instantly give bad stuff back, which is why another important reason why you should go around giving people the fruit of the spirit because it's so important. Otherwise, people, they lose themselves in it, and that is not good. Um, I went through these notes a lot faster than I thought I would. <laughs> so I guess I'll read my closing remark then. That was a lot quicker than I was hoping. Okay. <laughs> okay, so go, show people love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you might be surprised how much you get back. <laughs> I thought it was going to last. It's all right. We, we had an awesome conversation in the car about it, too, and he goes, I got it down to 10 minutes, Mary, and I was thinking, yeah, I have things down to 10 minutes in my, in my room at home, but it always comes out quicker, uh, but we're so excited. Thank you for bringing the word. We're, the fruit of the Spirit are so important, and the way that we live our lives is the way we want others to live, and so if we model it, we are um, helping others to know that. Pastor Tanya, will, can I have you come forward also? This is a really exciting time for the youth, but for all of us too. Every time we get to come to God's table and eat of the uh, bread and the fruit of the vine is an exciting time. It's a remembrance of Jesus, what he did for us, that he loves us. And this is definitely going to be a very sweet meal for these um, youth who have been fasting And we just, every time we take it, we want to remember what Jesus did for us. But Christ invites all who love him to come and to partake in the meal that he uh, shared with his disciples before his last uh, time on the earth, before his crucifixion. And we uh, will celebrate that now just want to add that you don't have to be a United Methodist or a member of this congregation in order to be welcome at Christ's table. Um, In the United Methodist tradition, we do honor an open table. And so as the ushers invite you forward in a few moments, we hope that all of you will experience Christ's personal invitation uh, to be in fellowship and in communion with him and with these wonderful people. Um, I just want to say that um, as Christ uh, turned over the ministry of 
uh, the min his ministry to his disciples. It's very much like what we have done here this morning. Um, uh, adults have turned over the ministry uh, to those that we have been training up all of uh, these years, some of them from the time that they were in the cradle, others who are new to us, and yet these disciples are carrying on the ministry of the church. Sometimes you hear people say that the youth are the future of the church, but I think that's only part of the truth. Uh, the truth is youth and children are, are the church now, and they have so much to offer us as uh, the grown-ups in terms of what we learn from you and the way that you bless us. And so I just want to, on behalf of our congregation, say thank you to our young people for your leadership and for a worshipful time for all of us this morning. On Christ's final night before he was betrayed and went to his death for us, he sat at the table and he shared um, a wonderful time of fellowship and I imagine laughter and uh, just enjoying one another's company, much like these young people have been doing uh, overnight here at the church. And then I imagined that Christ must have become um, more sober and um, reflective as he took the bread and offered thanks to God for the gift of bread. And then he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. Um, this is my body, which will be broken for you. And whenever you're together, whenever you're together, I want you to remember me and to remember what I've done for you. And then after the supper, again, as the mood is changing, he took the cup and he offered it to his disciples. By the way, these cups are from Haiti, handmade in Haiti. We just brought those from our recent mission trip. Oh, and my cup overflows <laughs> with love. Here we go. Jesus took the cup and uh, he offered thanks to God for the fruit of the vine, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you, uh, for this is my blood poured out for you and for the whole world for the forgiveness of sins. And again, whenever you drink of this and you're together, please remember me. And so in remembrance of Christ and as a way to celebrate his presence in our midst and as a way to experience deep sense of fellowship and community with one another. We break bread, and we break our fast, and we break bread together, and we dip in the cup. Here at Dixborough, for those of you who are guests with us today, we um, receive communion by the ancient method called intinction. Uh, the youth will be serving you once again. They will break off a piece of bread. And if you'll just hold out your outstretched hand as if you're receiving a gift, for indeed you are. Um, receive that gift of bread and then dip it in the cup and eat. And then you may return to your place um, satisfied, your hunger and thirst refreshed by the presence of Christ and by the ministry of his disciples here this morning. Will you pray with me? Holy God, pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, that they may be for us a true communion with Christ. Let us be bread and, and quench the thirst of those in our community and in the world who who, who hunger and thirst to know you by our presence, by our word and deed, by our love. Let others experience communion with you through us. For we offer this and all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Go wash your hands.
body of Christ broken for you and his blood poured out for you. By the way, the body, the bread, is a gift from uh, Brooke Burns, who um, made this herself as a sharing of her gift uh, here at Dixville Church this morning. And if you, as you come forward, if you will also join in singing our communion song also. But the table's ready, ready to be served. Please come forward.
Let us pray. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us stand and sing in our closing song, Revival.
Well, um, I'll see you all in the fellowship hall for coffee hour, and please go and give people fruit of the Spirit, and you'll get some back. And I guess the youth will run away. But, okay, <laughs> bye. You can all go now. Woo! <laughs> for I can hear the thunder in the distance Like the train on the edge of the town I can feel the brooding of the spirit Lay your burdens down Lay your burdens down Relax Like a train on the edge of the town the brooding of your spirit, lay your burden.